All right, so yesterday we made cabbage juice and I said it was an indicator. The question is, what the heck is that? What is an indicator? Well, that, let's explore that by looking at this bouquet of flowers. Isn't it beautiful? It is a bouquet of flowers, except that it's a bouquet. My question to you French people is, why the heck do you have a T there if you're not going to pronounce it? Okay, in Spanish, every letter, we pronounce every letter, except for the J's. J's? What? 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 I can't hear you. Oh, you didn't get a note sheet. Isn't it beautiful? What happens after a few days? What? No, I gave you two. I thought somebody had already. Sean, give them that. What happens after a few days? It shrivels up. Yes, on the shrivel. More importantly for us, it begins to change color. No, okay. I beg to differ. It was dead back when it looked like this. <laughs> it was dead. Okay. It, it, okay. Maya, I think we're both right and we're both wrong. In that there are still, at this point, there's still individual cells that may be alive. But, of course, it has been cut off from the plant. So it's in the, it's in the process of dying. But... That's right. At this point, it has died a little further. <laughs> so what happens to the color of many of the flowers after a few days? As the petals decay, the chemicals that make up the petals, they make up all those beautiful colors begin to undergo changes. Acids and bases are released into the water where they are sitting. It changes the acid and base balance. What happens? The flower petals have chemicals in them that will be affected by the changing amounts of acids and bases. That is why they change colors. That is why they change colors, because there is an acid-base change. So what are acid-base indicators? Let's see. What do we call the scale that is used to describe changing amounts of acids and bases? pH scale. The pH scale. We've already encountered that. The pH scale. All right, who remembers from three, four, five weeks ago? Alex, what values do acids have on the pH scale? Not quite right, close. You see, from six to seven, it's still acidic. So it's not right to say zero to six point to six, it's zero to six point nine. All right, Alex, I'll let you redeem yourself. Ready? What about base? Wesley? 7.1 to 14. Okay, Alex, this is your last chance. In baseball, you would strike out if you don't get this one, okay? You've been wrong. Don't help him. It's more fun for us if you don't help him. All right, Alex, if it's neutral, if it's neither acidic nor basic, what is it? Jeopardy. He's jeopardizing this whole thing. What is seven is the answer to the question, what value do neutral solutions have on the pH scale? Okay, so what are acid-base indicators? They're chemicals that are either natural or man-made that can tell us where you are falling in the pH scale. 
Are you a three? Are you a 10? Are you a 14? Or are you seven? So these chemicals will tell us what the pH is. So what exactly is going on? Are the chemicals blowing up? Are they changing into something else? Actually, no. The chemicals are going to change their shape. Yes, as hard as it is for us to believe, these are very complex, very large chemicals that are a certain shape. If they rearrange themselves, they kind of change, they kind of bend themselves in certain places and change their shape, they are going to change the way they emit light. So if you look like uni, you may give off blue light, but if you change your shape to look like Westland, then you may be giving off red light. So by changing your shape, you can actually change your color. By changing your shape, you can change your color. Remember, you're going to need these notes for the upcoming quiz and test next week. What are examples of natural acid base indicators? Beets. Who can beat a beet? Beets are awesome, except when they're not, which is all the time. My wife loves beets. I do not. But have you not noticed, those of you who like beets, you put the beets in water, and pretty soon the water is what? Purple. So beets are similar to cabbage juice. Beets in a very basic solution will change the color of beets from red to purple. So if it's really purpley, it must be in a base. If it's red, it must be an acid. Blackberries, which I love, but they're hard to eat. Does anyone know why they're so hard to eat? The little seeds get stuck in my molar. So this is the secret. You ready? For those of you who like blackberries, but you don't like... Okay, put the blackberry in your mouth, and then use your tongue to smash it against your teeth. Don't chew on it. Smash it against your teeth. It'll break up into smaller bits. Make sure you taste and enjoy the, the, the juice and then swallow the whole thing. Swallow the whole, if you chew on it, what's gonna happen? Oh man, it's gonna get the seeds. Let's think about it. It's both ways they're going down. So does it really matter? Okay, then fine. Chew on the, and then have to pick your teeth the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so, blackberries or black courant. I don't know if it's French, it sounds French, courant. Or black raspberries change from red in an acid to blue or violet in a base. Ever notice blueberries have like different colors? Some blueberries are kind of reddish and some. That has to do with how ripe they are. You see, when people, instead of saying, ooh, that's really decayed, people in the fruit, food industry will say, ooh, that's really ripe. Ripe means decay. So as blueberries begin to decay, they turn more and more red. So these, I'm going to want these because that means they've decayed quite a bit and they're nice and ripe and they're really, really sweet. The bluer they are, typically the sour or they no, the bitter, more bitter they are. The pinker or the redder they are, the sweeter they're gonna be. Cherries. Ever gotten a bunch of cherries and started eating them? Notice that they're different shades. Okay, that has to do with how far along they have decayed. As they decay, they turn from blue to red so the brighter okay this shouldn't be any talking while i'm talking the really bright cheerful ones those are the ones that are going to be the sweetest typically so those are the ones you want if they're dark and purplish those are going to be more basic they're going to be more more uh 
more uh, 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 bitter. Yeah, they're more bitter. Geranium petals. Geraniums. Those are the little flowers. They look like little puff balls. They're different colors. As they decay, they will undergo different colors. So red is in, in an acid, blue in a base. Grapes, same situation. You can get a bunch of grapes in a vine, and they're going to have slightly different color. It has to do with how they have ripened, because they have these things called anthocyanins and monoglucosides and mulvidins. Ooh, mulvidins. Go up to somebody and say, hey, I see your mulvidins are showing. You know what that means? They're blue. Okay, they've got their blue. So if you're somebody looking really kind of bad, you can look at them and say, ooh, you're kind of mulvidden today. Mm -hmm. All right, so they will change colors from deep red to violet. How about this one? You're familiar with this one over here? Red cabbage. Actually, the really cool thing about red cabbage, what sets it apart from all the others, is the others will change color in a narrow band of pH, but universal um, red cabbage has many of these chemicals that change color. So as you will see tomorrow, you can see almost the entire pH range with red cabbage juice. Flowers, rose petals, they call this blue. I don't know why they call it blue, but if it's red, then it must be in an acid. Blue means that it is in a base. All right, there's some man-made or household examples of indicators. Baking soda. You put baking soda in an acid, it fizzes. You put it in a base and it'll look at you like this. Okay, in other words, in an acid, it reacts. In a base, it doesn't do anything. Okay, I have no experience here. Can you ladies, or maybe some of you men, tell me a little bit about color changing lipstick? You've never heard of color changing? I mean, no, no, you put some drink in your, in your, in your mouth and it changes color. Uh, no, no, we're talking it will change colors while you're wearing it. You've never heard of that? I had had several, several people had, had heard of that, had actually used it. Oh, well, I don't know, but these, these types of lipstick are going to have these chemicals that change color in an acid or base. X-Lax. Okay, if anyone ever gives you like this little cube, little cube of chocolate, don't eat it. Not unless it says Hershey's on it, don't eat it. Why? Because there's a chemical in these X-Lax chocolate little cubes that will make, let's just say, it'll make everything move easier. You know, it'll move easier. Okay? I prefer taking the little pills. If this hasn't happened to you, it will when you get older. Constipation is one of those things that just happens when you get older. So that's why you get a bunch of old people together. What is the number one topic of conversation? Constipation, whether they're constipated or not. I don't know why. I always used to think, man, my grandparents are really weird because both sets of grandparents would come together and they'd start talking about whether they're constipated or not. And I'm going, this is just messed up, man. And then I got to be my grandparents' age, and now I realize, no, this is a very serious topic of conversation. Vanilla, this is cool because, oh, I'm sorry, this one is in an acid, it's clear. In an acid, this laxative is going to be clear. In a base, it's going to be hot pink or fuchsia. Hot pink. This is not a visual indicator. It is an olfactory indicator or olfactory indicator. In other words, you know what vanilla smells like. It has a very powerful smell. 
that's in an acid. If you were to put it in a base, the smell would go away. So in an acid, vanilla smells vanilla-y. In a base, vanilla smells like nothing. And finally, washing soda. Washing soda is laundry detergent, and you put it in an acid, it'll fizz. You put it in a base, it will do nothing. So these are all examples of acid-base indicators that are in your house. Is there an indicator besides cabbage juice that will give you color change? Is there one indicator that will give you a color change over all of the pH range? The answer is no. Even cabbage juice is made up of various indicators. So what do we call? Cabbage juice is known as a universal indicator, but there's also a universal indicator that you can buy. Universal indicators have a mixture of indicators inside of it that will change color at all the different points on the pH scale. So it is very, very important to us. All right, so why is the universal indicator so valuable? Because every indicator only has a certain part of the pH scale that it can work. The universal indicator is going to let us see the entire pH scale. So check it out. Very pretty. Look at that. Every pH is a different shade of a different color. Here you have a bottle of universal indicator, and it usually comes with this little card that can help you determine what the pH is. So here it is. Muratic acid, which you probably don't have in your house unless you have a boat and you like to get the algae off your boat. Muratic acid would be red, deep red, in... Universal indicator. Lemon would be yellowish. Apple or vinegar would be bright yellow. Apple is green. Tomato is green. Banana will be this shade of green. Milk will be this shade of green. Water is this shade of green. Blood is going to be this shade of green. Baking soda starts switching over to more of a greenish blue. Soap will be bluish. Bleach is purplish blue, and finally, Drano, drain cleaner, is purple. What? Chlorine, like the chlorine in your uh, in pools, that's probably going to be an acid, so it's going to be on the red side. Oh, that's right. So you're already familiar with this because of testing the water, right? You have strips, or do you have drops? And it's always on the red side. If it starts getting, yeah, you want it to be on the red side. Good, good, good. So you're, you're, you're connected. Okay, so here, this is something that we in chemistry would deal with if we're looking at different uh, pH changes. That's what we would look on, the, on this chart to see which one of these we wanted. All right, so the most important chemical acid-base indicator is called litmus, and it comes from lichens. I liken it to be a lichen. It, you know what a lichen is? Usually they can be found where in a shadowy part of a tree, and it's like a, a flaky, green, leafy thing that's stuck to the tree. That's a lichen. So there's some lichens that if you drain the color off of them, they become what we call litmus. And litmus will just tell you whether it's an acid or base. If it's blue, 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 base. Blue, 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 base, blue. Blue, 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 base. Base, blue. So in a base, it turns blue. Acid, if you say it like that, acid rhymes with red. Red, acid. 
I said red. Yes, it does rhyme. Okay, if you say it like this, acid, red, it doesn't rhyme. That's why you have to say it like this, acid, red. So here's the blue litmus paper comes in either blue or red, but if you put it in a base, both of them turn blue, or rather the blue stays blue and the red stays goes to blue. If you put it in an acid, the red stays red and the blue turns red. And if you turn it to neutral, they stay the same. So if it turns red, it is an acid. If it turns blue, it is a b -b 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 base. Why is litmus important to us? Because it's an expression. It is a cultural phenomenon. Westland. What is your litmus test? Are, are you planning to marry a female? Okay, what is your litmus test for? Okay, a litmus test is a skill or an attribute that the person must have in order for them to pass your test. So, for example, um, is your litmus, do they have to have two functioning eyes? Okay, can, so they can't have one like a glass eye or a prosthetic Okay, so you have two functioning eyes. That would be his litmus test. Um, red hair, black hair, purple hair, what? What color? What? Any color other than purple. Okay, so that would be his litmus test. Female, is that, that's the number one litmus test. Female, so there's nothing varying there. Okay, so that would be a litmus test. Oftentimes, you're gonna hear this expression when there is a Supreme Court nominee. Because if you're a conservative, you want the litmus test to be the Supreme Court nominee is against abortion. If you're a liberal, then you want the, Supreme, the, the litmus test to be that they are for abortion. So oftentimes when they're talking about this, they're gonna be talking about, uh, they're gonna be talking about Litmus test, and now you will understand. Litmus test, it comes from chemistry. Litmus test. All right?